Hey guys, Sun down here. This is gonna be my chapter review to One Piece nine seven seven. The party's off. Now this was a it was a good chapter. I enjoyed it. Thought it was pretty decent. <clears throat> um, there were still some elements of you know could the Straw Hats be more a little bit more serious considering the the actions they're about to undertake. You know the stuff that's about to go down. But I didn't actually have that much of an issue this chapter. I had more of an issue last chapter where the straw hats and everybody around them uh kind of let Mamonosuke go and they were really calm about that i was like come on be a bit more serious in that sense i, I don't think i was too concerned about the fact that you know they were going to go and fight kaido and big mom that's how the straw hats have always been um but the fact that they let Mamonosuke go so easily and they would say oh yeah cool we'll save you completely like happy with that and, and no one's really answered this for me yet why would they why were the scabbards or Kinemon Luffy, why were these guys all so sure that Kaido wouldn't just decapitate Monosuke when he when he got him in his hands? I don't I don't see why not. Obviously I doubt that's gonna happen. One piece is not about that kind of we're gonna decapitate a kid, especially a main character. I doubt that's gonna happen, but give me a reason why that shouldn't happen. I, I'm still a little bit concerned about that. Anyway, this Chapter starts off with the cover page. We see Lola and Chiffon meet each other again for the first time in a long while. Beige and Gotti are just kind of looking at each of the two of them like the heck. They're, they're exactly the same. I'm not sure if Beige realized how similar they were. And you even see his kid looking up at um, looking up at Lola like, Wait, the, the heck is this? What's going on? So I thought that was pretty funny. Um, and this chapter starts off, the first scene is essentially everyone's hyping up on Jinbei. They're just hugging him. Happy to be reunited by him, um, uh, with him. Uh, Usopp's talking about. I can't believe we've got a former warlord on our on our ship as part of our crew. Uh, Sanji, I, I love this part. I, I pro people probably didn't notice. I'm not sure if you did actually. A, a couple of people didn't read it, but Sanji is just there, annoyed by the fact that both Nami and Carrot are hugging Jinbei, and he's like, "The fuck? <laughs> like what? This guy gets a hug straight away. I've been part of this crew for years, and this guy gets hugs already." So I thought that's pretty funny. Frankie's more happy by the fact that. Um, they now have someone who can actually um, steer the ship. You know, he's he's meant to be the helmsman. Uh, so someone who can steer the ship properly. And that's, you know, it's going to be Jinbei. He has a full knowledge of the sea, uh, being a fisherman as well. He, he's he's the best place to be the helmsman. So I'm, I'm happy with that. And so is Frankie. Uh, Frankie even then proposes with a really stupid grin. He's like, should we make a toast? Apparently they have no booze, but this is where Zoro comes in. Zoro's like, actually, wait, I can smell some booze. Trust me, I know where the booze is. Uh, so then we go uh, to another scene where Kinemon's like, uh, I don't, I want to be sure what we're actually doing on the island. Law here makes mention, and I loved Law's kind of whole demeanor this chapter, which is let's account for Luffy and Kid in the fact that they'll be a part of the plan, but we're going to account for them being basically not a part of the plan they're gonna just go and do their own thing we'll account for that by doing everything we can around them and kind of just ignore what they're doing so i thought that was pretty funny uh we see shishilian come over here he's like i i want to actually hear what the plan is um as kind of one of the the, the vassals of kozuki odin he's speaking to uh, ino arashi here. he's like i need to know the plan and leave the command of the minx to me and uh ino arashi seems pretty calm with this i think he's he's kind of you know arashi's more in this situation acting as like he said a vassal of kozuki odin rather than leader of the mink so full power shishilian who looks dope as shit by the way i'm not sure if i've mentioned that before but shishilian looks sick uh he's there like i will take control of the minx uh just let me know what the, what, what the hell we're doing right hyogoro is pretty much of the same um in the same vein he's just like oh yeah you know i i want to take control of the the people of samurai the, the people of samurai the wano the samurai of wano um so that way you guys can relax and, and focus on your battles so hyogoro is actually taking control of the samurai shishilian will be taking control of the minx um so they get to work and law once again he's like wait this, this ship isn't your garrison get the hell off my ship so he's he's just moody as as always but this is the part that i really liked we have Kinemon go through the plan. Kinemon's like, all right, so Onigashima is an island surrounded by mountains. There's an in there's an entrance through the front, uh, and the large skull that kind of looms over the island is part of the mountain range. So what I'm assuming here is that that skull, somehow mountains have grown over it, or it's actually rock and it's stone, it's a mountain itself, and it's just, just taken the shape of a skull. I'm not quite sure how that works, but the castle is meant to be inside of this Oni skull. 
this demon skull and according to their the dimension blueprints that they got there's a rear gate at the back of these mountains uh so they have the front they have the two they have the sides going past the only on each cheek and then they have the back of the skull which is where the rear gate is supposed to be associated um so what Kinemon's plan here is like, oh yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to split into forces of two, taking both the mountain mountain paths on the right and the left. We're going to infiltrate through the rear gate and launch a surprise attack on Kaido when he's drunk. Yeah, and I, I've always said, like, that plan's a little bit shady. It doesn't seem to, you know, it's not really a plan. That's just, yeah, this is what we're going to do. There's no plan. There's no steps. There's no action that's involved here. It's just, we're going to do this. There's going to be nothing that's going to get in our way. And we're cool. So what I love here, and I think Denjiro is very aware of what he's doing. Denjiro is both hyping up and questioning. So he's he's questioning Ki uh, Kinemon. Kinemon then has no answer. Someone else will answer. And Denjiro will be like, oh, so that was your plan all along, Kinemon. You're amazing. And I think he's purposefully hyping up Kinemon so that he doesn't look bad, so that he doesn't look stupid in front of the other, in front of the pirates, in front of the minx, and in front of the rest of the samurai. But you have people like Raizo all the way through the chapter with just some snot hanging from his nose. Like, nah, this guy's being overestimated. He had no idea what was going on. So Denjiro's just there like, hmm, I see. So that was the plan that you revealed to Kanjiro to deceive him. But what's your actual plan? And Kinemon's like, oh, what? So I thought that was, this, this is was whole, this is all hilarious, I thought. Um, so Law is just like, all right, this is the plan, guys. We're assuming, the, we have to assume that the enemy is aware of the, the raid already. So that's, a, that's, that's something that Law has already instilled in this plan that the rest of them didn't have. And Denjiro maybe would have said something like this. But the rest of them didn't make mention of the fact that we need to assume that they know we're coming. Uh, so that we don't go in thinking, oh, you know, this is, this is all going easy. This is all great. You have to assume the worst and then plan for it. So that's what I like about Law. Law's like, all right, let's be real here. This is the worst case scenario. Let's assume that and work off of that. So... He understands exactly what the goals of Kaido and, and the rest of them are. He's like, they want to crush the Akazaya 9. Uh, that's that's what Orochi would want. That's what Kaido wants. As well as the three captains, which is where Kaido comes m more into play. Straw Hat, Luffy, uh, Law, and Kid. Um, so <laughs> what Law says here is like, all right, no matter what we do, there are going to be two idiots, Law, I mean, uh, Luffy and Kid, that are going to go and do whatever they want. So what we should do is we should use those as a diversion. So the idiots will go in through the middle. They will go and attack Onigashima through the front gates, which is fine. So what we'll do is we'll send everyone down the left path, well, the right path and the left path uh, as originally planned. Uh, that's that's all good. However, those soldiers will also be a diversion for where we actually want to send people in. Hyogoro's like, all right, that's cool. Um, you know, we we want to set this all up so that Kinemon's group can make it to the true battle. They have the main battle. And Shishilian's like, but how, how will the Akazaya 9 go in? Law makes mention here. He's like, all right, so while we have this, this right group, this left group, and this middle group all going through the kind of main entrance and around to the back entrance of um, Onigashima, we'll take the Akazaya 9 in my submarine we'll go beneath these circulating uh, whirlpools and stuff like that and we'll go all the way to the back of Onigashima where, the, where there's the rear entrance and I can use my room I can use my power to teleport people across to the the rear entrance and that's where we'll make our our main attack so I'm not sure if that's where the majority of their numbers are going to be but that's where they're gonna, that's where the Akazaya 9 for sure are going to be apart from uh, Denjiro, I think, because Denjiro makes mention somewhere here of, yeah, he does say, I'll, I'll, I will take the other side of the mountains. Uh, the, you can send the rest of them in. So I think Denjiro here is going to try and make use of the fact that, you know, his his Kyoshiro uh, kind of guys, I think he's going to try and go in as an ally and then just wreak havoc. But they might already know about that because of Kanjiro. So <clears throat> uh, Kinemon's just like, oh, yeah, but at the very least, I'm, I must be there to lead the troops. That's what Denjiro says, what he says. Um, and they're all good with that. And then you see Kanjiro's stupid face again. He's blushing. <laughs> like he's he looks really ugly. He's like, "Oh, perfect. This is just as I planned." And then you're just like, "Oh yeah, you're so th you're so thoughtful." But Raizo once again, he's just looking at him like, "The heck are you talking about? This is this is completely nonsense." Nonsense. So Laws just it makes mention here of the fact that he doesn't see the straw hat ship. Denjiro shits his pants as he hears uh, Luffy or someone in the distance saying "Ah" or something like that. Someone screaming. And he, he, he remembers, he, oh shit, I didn't warn them about about the guards at the Tori gate. So there's this gate, much like you see in like most anime, 
and it stands in front of the uh, in front of Onigashima, and it's basically a small fortress. It's heavily loaded with guns, artillery, um, and basically he thinks that Luffy and his crew have gone into them and just been absolutely decimated. Um, but what we see is Luffy obviously and his crew smack the shit out of the people at the Tori Gate. You have Jinbei smack his first person as a as an official straw hat. Zoro looks cool. Sanji looks cool as shit. He's just there, like, smoking while absolutely decking someone. Robin gets in on the action. She actually hits and stomps on someone. And Brooke, he, he always looks cool when he's um, when he's freezing someone's ass off. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then you have Usopp, Nami, and Chopper just kind of watching. And I wish, I kind of wish that, I know that these guys are the, the weakling trio, but as we progress, I was kind of hoping that they would escalate and become, you know, more more willing to fight. But I suppose, you know, we'll, we'll see more of them when we come to the actual fights and not these um, kind of weaklings, these underlings. But I was hoping that someone like Usopp, at the very least, having spent all that time on, on the island and stuff like that, I, I was hoping he'd be more willing to step forward. Uh, and especially Nami as well. I mean, like she's been out there helping Luffy on Whole Cake Island. Island. Uh, so I, I really thought that she'd be willing to step up a little bit more as well, maybe utilize Zeus. But I suppose Oda didn't really want to get them involved and wants to save their action for later. The samurai are all looking at Luffy and stuff like that, and they're just like, "Holy shit! These guys are these guys are some strong allies. We we they, they've gotten rid of the first hurdle that could have probably decimated a few of our ships. Um, so considering they've gotten rid of this first hurdle, we, we we need to tell these guys how much we appreciate them. And um, all ships onwards to Onigashima. But what we get here is kind of a kind of like three quarters, or maybe even slightly less than that, three fifths, maybe." of a double spread that is dedicated to um the straw hats and the decimation that they've caused so sanji's sitting on top of someone he's pointing at zoro saying yo like where, where the hell did you find that booze so the reason they're here is because zoro could smell the booze that's why they went there that's why they charged ahead and zoro could smell the booze from across the sea in the midst of all these explosions someone mentioned this on reddit and i was like yo zoro considering he has no idea for directions he could smell booze from a mile away and what actually struck me here is brook is tall we know Brook is massive. Jinbei is humongous compared to any of the Straw Hats. Look how big he is. He is massive. And I think, I'm not sure if this is a scaling issue with Oda, but I, I think this might actually just be Jinbei is huge anyway, and I've, I've just forgotten how large he is. He's a big boy. Uh, Robin's is there looking cool as shit in her kimono. Uh, and that's pretty much what, what that whole chapter well what that part of the chapter was about they almost raise a toast to Jinbei but with everyone making noise about you know all ships onwards to Onigashima and everyone's getting hyped about you know the speed is of the essence don't give the enemy time to prepare Luffy and his, his company his, his crew are just like actually you know what forget it we'll do the party we'll do the toast and everything after we beat Kaido we'll have one hell of a party after all of this shit for now let's go and kick the shit out of them um, and the booze will taste even better after that we see Actually, I like this part as well. We see Kid saying, "Move out of the way, small fry. We're gonna, we're gonna get ahead of you guys. We're gonna take Kaido's head." And you see, F Killer is back with his mask on. He's still got the negative repercussions of the smile fruit. He's laughing behind his mask, but instead of making him feel uh, kind of different, instead of making him feel unwanted, the crew are kind of taking on that laugh as well. Um, Trying to make him feel as if you know he's not he's not so different from the rest of them. Trying to make him feel um, included, I think. Uh, so I, I thought that was a really nice touch, and goes to show that kids' crew, even though we only really know two of them, um, they they're quite nice fellas when they're not murdering people. Anyway, uh, Luffy kind of sees the competition here. He's like, "All right, don't let kids' ship get there first. They're not gonna get there first if Jinbei is a helm helmsman." So then we come to the last page where we go to Onigashima. We see one of the numbers. Uh, I think he dropped a drink or something like that. He's uh, the Kaido's men are saying, "Don't you know how to hold a barrel with your hands?" This is why I hate drinking with you guys. So we, we've been told before that they're bad drunks, right? And we see Orochi doing this weird uh, closer, come closer thing. We see Queen talking about there not being enough Oshiruko and how Big Mom is uh, wants plenty of it as, as well. We see Kaido. This is where a lot of people have been kind of speculating. Kaido makes mention here. Where he says, "Where is he? Where is my son? He should be making an appearance at the feast." Um, and I have—I can't tell you, man. I mean, like, who the hell? Since when have we heard anything about Kaido having a son? 
and who who has he had this son with like who's kaido's wife does he have a wife was it just a, a one night stand kind of thing who who i have no idea who this is supposed to be we saw this one person over and this is going to be a longer review than i thought it was going to be but we saw a person in punk hazard who i think once luffy defeated um what's his face caesar clown we saw this guy saying something along the lines of tell jack we can't we can't let this go the way that it's gone uh, we need to we need to tell jack about what just happened and he had kind of like a rosinante slash do flamingo coat uh, and he had horns very reminiscent to onigashima very reminiscent of kaido so that would kind of make sense if that if that was his son but people are also speculating on reddit at least um what if he had a son that was of similar age to momonosuke some people are saying what if momonosuke was kaido's son i doubt that but you know <laughs> yeah i really doubt that but um yeah what if what if kaido's son is of, is of similar age to momonosuke and takes a little bit to momonosuke what if he becomes a friend to momonosuke that would put kaido in a little bit of a dif- difficult position especially if there's some preferential treatment um but really I'm, i can't really speculate too much on that i don't know i don't know don't think we've had any hints for who kaido's son could be unless i think someone else made mention of this unless it was weevil edward weevil uh and th- that would be a bit of a weird one because weevil really looks kind of not much like him uh but i suppose the op the option is there you know so we see that yeah this numbers is uh, one of the numbers is heavily drunk uh queen is there Migoshiroko kaido has a son apparently we're told that all six of the tobi ropo the flying six are present kaido's like yeah we should probably get them in better better introduce him to Lin Lin. apparently big mom is there changing into a kimono it's not something i thought i'd want to see but you know now that it's an option yeah sure why not see big mom in a kimono uh, i suppose it's got to be it's got to be worth it right no matter which way it turns out but then we see the feet the, the kind of the shins of the tobi ropo so what can we discern from this people are suggesting I, a lot of people i'm not sure if they were joking around they were saying gin as in the guy that was on the Barati when we first went and saw Sanji Gin, the guy with the kind of that bar with the two balls, uh, one on either side. Uh, I think he's part of Don Krieg's crew. And that's a while ago. That's a long time ago. But they're saying that maybe Gin is one of these Toby Europa. I think they're talking about the guy at the forefront, the guy with the buckles across his shoes. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna see someone like Gin again, but it would be it would be cool. It would be a nice surprise to see him. I just don't think Gin would have gone from Don Krieg over to Kaido. I feel like, I feel like his arc from that whole Barati thing would not transition well to going into Kaido's crew. You know, it, it doesn't fit right. Um, but what are the notable mentions here? We have what looks like might it should obviously be a woman. I'm not sure with the whole Okama thing in One Piece, but there's a la- a person with heels on, which I, I'm assuming is is um uh, is a lady. She has her legs bare. She's wearing kind of like a woolly cloak kind of thing or a feathered cloak. And then the other thing is we actually have a samurai wearing the, um, I'm not sure what they call the wooden sandals with the two, uh, kind of like the flat board with the two pieces of wood going downwards. And his sword looks amazing. It's got like this flowery petal, uh, flowery petal, fl- flowery petals uh, kind of design going across the scabbard. It lo- he looks pretty cool just from the bottom, but his his kimono or whatever he's wearing looks a bit different because it has like a double-breasted look to it. At least that's what I think due to the four buttons that we see. Um, so he, and he's wearing a cape over it. We have this dude who's all in leather who I'm, I'm assuming is X-Drake. And then we have the two other guys. So we have what might be Gin. We have the lady, the samurai, X-Drake, and then two other people. Uh, so I'm really hyped for that. I think, yeah, we're, we're on break next week. But I, I enjoyed that. I thought it was pretty good. I just I, I want to know more about who the hell Kaido's son is. I want to actually see these numbers. What the hell are they? Um, I'm not too fussed about seeing Big Mom in a kimono. I want to see who the Tobi are. Uh, what, what are the designs? All that good stuff. And I want to see because because Law has a. I feel like we someone mentioned this on Reddit again because we know so much of the details of what the plan is. I feel like Oda's giving us basically a. a a look into his brain of i've given you what should be happening that's not gonna happen i feel it's gonna be something like that but that's pretty much all i have to say unless i ramble on so let me know what you guys thought this review let me know what you guys thought this chapter like comment subscribe all of that good stuff and i will see you guys in a very short while because i'm going to release my 
my hero review as well. So I'll see you guys in a bit.